Hi. Hi. How's it going? So good. I, th- I think I got a, a half decent idea about your character just from that song alone. Mm. Can you tell me a little bit about Caroline? Caroline, single mother of four, working for an amazing Jewish family that uh, gave her an opportunity to make a little more money, and she's afraid of change. Um, Husband's gone off to war, son's gone off to war, and uh, she's a stellar, one of the top maids ever, Mm. but um, she's afraid of change. She could always go and get a new job anywhere, anyone would hire her, yet she's stuck in this basement, it's Louisiana, you know, and this house that she lives in is the only one with a basement. So it's kind of a double entendre of being stuck underneath all of her sorrow and doing this job, but she's not a victim. That's no. the thing. Yeah, She's not a victim, and uh, she whoops her husband's butt and says, I'm divorcing this man in 1963. That's a different... At that time, divorce was taboo, you know? It's 1963, also the civil rights movement, right? Civil rights movement. Kennedy just died. All of that stuff. And that, yeah. all, that all factors in? Yeah, that all factors in. Oh, yeah. And I was watching the video trailer of this, of you <laughs> talking about it, and you said something interesting. You said, this reminds me of some of the women in my life. Absolutely. T- tell me about that. Women, young women, women my like think about it. Like Caroline's thirty nine. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm forty two, and I, I recall being in that space where even with the music business, just feeling stuck. What could I? Where else can I go? What could I do? And you know, my mother, my aunts. My mother is a, was a domestic in Jamaica. The difference is though, she wasn't Caroline. I thought she was, but uh, she's actually Dottie, her best friend. My mom decided to educate herself and make the best of her life and for her kids. Now Caroline. Is, is ready to leave it for the next generation, but her daughter wants her to change now, and she's afraid. So it, it must have been um, revelatory to, like, dig into these characters for you. Well, Tom, like, I'm talking booger tears. It's unreal, the shedding, uh, really stepping into Caroline's life. Yeah. You know, this experience is, I've never experienced anything like this in my life. I get lost in this woman's life. I've manifested her knee pain. I'm not even joking. What are you feeling? Like, what are you feeling when you manifest this woman's life? Responsibility, um, f- some fear, yeah. for sure. Um, what are you afraid of? Transformation to be, you know, I think some people get comfortable in misery. And yeah. even on today, you know, being able to be handed an opportunity to go educate yourself. It's one thing to get the money, another thing to do the work. Yeah. It's like, okay, yeah, here, you have all the money in the world. Yeah. You can do whatever you want with it, but you still need to have the faith, the courage, the resilience, the determination to actually do it. Yeah. Yeah. You um, you, you were talking about your mom just there for a second. Yeah. What was her name? Agatha. Agatha. Uh, classic good old, no middle name. Agatha McPherson married into Gordon, my dad. I love, I love when, when I ask people about their parents' names. Oftentimes they just smile when they say their <laughs> names. <laughs> yeah. So tell me a little bit about her. You mentioned a couple of things about her there. Well, first of all, how are you going to name a baby Agatha? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's just an old name. I don't know if you can just remember. That's just an old name out the, out the womb. You just look old. It's Agatha. Like, it's like a little boy named Barry or something you know like that. Saying? You know what I'm saying? Henry. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, amazing woman. Came to Canada in 1968 and uh, decided to make life. She had nine kids. I'm the baby of nine. Mm-hmm. And... The power of forgiveness and being able to love unconditionally. My parents divorced when I was 10, Mm. and uh, my mom was a foster parent still, worked for General Motors Canada, Mm. and raised us all off of that income, and here I am, an extension of her dream. I mean, that's amazing. Your mom passed away when? 2017. 2017. Yeah. And that'll change you. Oh, instant. Let me tell you something. You have not, you're suffering from some sort of heartbreak, or you can't fit in your skinny jeans. Yeah. Let somebody die. Yeah, you're telling me. I know exactly. Instant. What, I know exactly what you're talking For real. about. Yeah, it puts things in puts things in perspective. Hey? Right away. And also makes you you go on Instagram and someone's like, oh no, I lost my favorite travel mug. Right. You're like, okay, come through. But do you think it did something to you spiritually? Do you think it did something to you personally? On a molecular level, totally changed, softened me. I'm so excited. I have embraced my femininity in a way, um, and really became. I got this tattoo, this bridge on my arm. Yeah. To really. It didn't it deck chart numbers and all things that just didn't doesn't matter. It didn't matter anymore. But mm-hmm. I like to pour into people, and that's honoring my mom. My mom was always somebody that saw the best in others, and and pushed them in a tough love way. Do you do you see her coming out in you? Oh gosh, do- I'm I'm her. My nieces and nephews are like, okay, grandma. <laughs> oh really? Okay, are you you are you mom? What are you doing? Everything. Her sayings. Her. Sometimes I just feel her. She's funny, too. Just funny. Like, she'll say things that are just funny. They just lighten up a room. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I'm cooking. You know, all we, that. We, I think we grow up and we say to each other, you know, I'm not going to be like my folks or something like that. I'm going to be my own person. And then 
Slowly but surely, they creep their way in. Oh, yeah. And you're pretty happy about it when it does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That wisdom. I'm like, okay, to be have my mom's wisdom at 42. My mom died at 81. And I said, you know, when she passed, I was 40. I said, you know what? If I get to live my life twice, like my mom lived my life twice. So that's, I had that, that, just that wisdom right out the gate that, okay, God, I get to do this again. Even if I get her lifespan, then I'm going to do it. This is my rebirth. You know, speaking of rebirth, I, I, I've seen you on stage like a million times. Before we were uh, turning the microphones on, you and I were talking about all the weird gigs we've done together. For some <laughs> reason or not, you and I have done a lot of shows together. We're the weird crew. Yeah, we, we do a lot of weird jobs. Yeah. And But I've seen you give like a, an unbelievable, a couple of pretty unbelievable stage performances. But always is you. Always is Julie Black getting up there with your band, doing your thing. How are you finding doing the musical theater thing versus doing your own show? Oh my goodness! So this this musical theater thing. First of all, shout out to Robert McQueen. He's if I get to work with him, he's a director. He's the one directing the play, the musical. He has taught me how to fall like Hansel and Gretel. Just follow the words. Let the words take you to where you need to go. The music comes after. So the the original challenge was shedding, being able to sing well. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like I I could style it up. No styling it up. Mm. No styling it up. If it comes out as a crack or as a, as a whale or as a, you just, just let it come out. So don't make sound. Let sound. It's one of the biggest lessons that I'll take into my my band shows now. Mm-hmm. You know, oh. and yeah, 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 and being being present, like feeling the ground under your feet, always, mm. like that meditative state. Woo-hoo! It's unreal. It got to be funny too because you spent your entire life being Julie Black on stage, and you mm-hmm. have to go out there and not be Julie Black on stage. Like you have to be somebody else. It's wonderful. And I, I think everybody should take the opportunity to even go do improv, just do something. Why, that, what does it do to you? Well, it allows you to realize that being yourself is easy. You know, it's the easiest thing to be. You don't have to try. Mm-hmm. So that automatically, I believe, gives you a new, just a new outlook on life. Oh, yeah, new empathy. If you're just tuning yeah. in, I'm speaking with Julie Black. Uh, she plays Caroline in the play Caroline or Change on stage at the Winter Garden Theater in Toronto this Thursday. And take a listen to this. Okay. <laughs> you know the black girl comes out every time. Okay. Uh, Whitney Houston with I Want to Dance with Somebody. You said, I, I read this quote when I was getting ready for this interview. Without Whitney Houston, there is no Julie Black. None. Zero. Why, why not? Whitney Houston lived in my household all the time. Lived in, you know, in my heart. The very first, for show and tell. Because back in the day, you know, because mom was raising nine of us. Nine. Nine, yeah. Nine right. of us. Yeah. So, you know, we had to divvy up. We were in Porto. But I didn't get to bring Cabbage Patch and Barbie and all that to for show and tell. So I brought my voice. And the first song I sang was a Whitney Houston song in like grade two as show and tell. Every, people bringing Ken and Barbie, I'm bringing music. Uh, yeah. So I'll never forget that. That was the start of me. Was that an inspiration? Like, did you say, I want to be that? I want to be Whitney Houston? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that, that, she, I remember the album cover, her first one with her, like, there was like a bathing suit, like brown and just, just the slick back hair, just to see such beautiful. Just a beautiful woman. Yeah. And that voice. When did you realize you could sing? I was six years old in church. I realized that I could do, I, I mean, I didn't know what, I, I didn't know, I, I didn't have the, the maturity to say, oh, I sing well. Yeah. But I knew that people responded positively when I did this thing called singing. And, and they certainly did. I mean, they have. I want to play you one more song. Just take take a listen to this. Yo, my own girl, my own oh. oh, no. <laughs> Oh, that is so. That was my introduction to you. Wow, growing twenty up, years ago, growing up in Newfoundland. Stop. That is uh, Money Jane, Baby Blue Sound Crew, Julie Black, two thousand one. So my buddy Anupa Mystery from The Fader, she's a great writer. She used to write for The Fader. She wrote an article that essentially said, and she's going to kill me because I'm going to paraphrase this, but she essentially said that Money Jane like sort of invented the Toronto sound. Yeah. Do you feel that? I believe that fundamentally, wholeheartedly, yes. Do Do you feel like? Did it feel like that in the moment? Did it feel like you guys had created something new? In the moment, I don't, yes, because you know, Baby Blue Sound Crew at the time had got this deal with Universal, which was unheard of for a DJ crew. Um, Sean Paul, that was his first international like crossover hit. You know, this is Sean Paul who ended up doing. Yeah, get give busy, me the right? light, get busy, all that baby boy with Beyonce and all that. You know, of course, Cardinal has been doing it from time. Yeah. Uh, so what I will say at, at that time, it was really, it the fun was there, and that's what I I channel those air that time now, especially since mom. I go back and think about the feeling 
What did it feel like? And I think if more people would understand that we're not chasing the accolade or the money or the relationship, we're actually chasing the feeling. Mm. So to remember the feeling and you'll find the joy. So what do you want that feeling to be for the next 20 years? You said you got another life to live over again. Yeah. You know what? Joy, my, just filling my joy bank, joy unspeakable. Moments like this, like how many, we could, I walk in and we have memories, Tom, mm. actually, mm. you know, and that, that's a blessing. That's where, that's the, that's the wealth. Mm. How many people could say that they were present enough? We were present in those scenarios that we spoke about. Or if we wouldn't remember, we've seen so many people. Mm-hmm. We've done so many things. We've been blessed. Mm-hmm. To be like, oh man, you remember this? Not all. Oh, you remember? More memories. Mm-hmm. And to, to really take care of the cognitive health. I do brain exercises. I do, you know, flip cards. And like, I do stuff, especially because they had diagnosed my mom with dementia. We, we, we reversed her symptoms. Crossword puzzles, dancing, joy, 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 unspeakable. So you're, yeah, you try to keep that joy, try to keep in the moment. In the moment. Um, did you watch the Grammys last night? I watched most of it, yes. What did you think of the tributes to Kobe on the show? Well, you know what? I I think they did well, considering it was hours before. Yeah. You know what I mean? I felt the sense. I love what Alicia did, I will say. Alicia Keys. Alicia Keys. Yeah. Yes, I've been calling her Alicia. Hey, girl. <laughs> um, and you could feel that everybody was impacted because that's the one. No one's getting out of here alive, people. Yeah. You get know what I'm saying? It's yeah. coming. We don't know how. Yeah. So live right. Just live right. Yeah, and it's it's funny to hear because I think that he, you know, he's obviously a legend in sports, a legend in basketball. You you saw immediately his impact in everybody. You know, I felt that it it pinched me. I met him in two thousand five. Did you really? Yeah, I did. Great we- guy. Had spent said said hello. How are you? Love your song. Cause I did some some songs with the Black Eyed Peas back then, and it was it was amazing. But his work ethic. I've watched him on being interviewed by Ed Milet. I watch him on YouTube. I, I his work ethic is, I I I model my life. After mm-hmm. his work ethic, no lie, not because he passed away. Like the, the Kobe effect is real. First one to first one there, last one to leave. Let's go. Julie Black, it's nice to talk to you. Yeah, you too. I'll see you again in another weird gig. You better come to Caroline. I'm gonna come to Caroline. You're, it's on. You hear that? He said he's coming to Caroline. We're getting a thumbs up from the booth, which is holding me to. I'm 100 percent going. I call people out on air, live. <laughs> Everybody heard this. The whole country. He's coming. I'll go there and I'll take a selfie and everything. You'll see that I was there. It'll, right. be, it'll be great. Selfie. You're gonna Photoshop the selfie. I'm gonna bring a green screen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, Tom's I'm screen. Back.